Hey friends, today is December 10th, 2022. Therefore, we are in Luke's Gospel, chapter 10. What did you think? Quite a bit of reading again today. First, we get Jesus sends out his 12 disciples, or his disciples. Seven, oh, this is not the 12. This is 70. This isn't the 12. The 12 are appointed to a permanent office like a short-term mission trip. This is like a short-term mission trip. 70 is a number used specifically with reference back to Genesis chapter 10. After the flood, there were 70 nations, the descendants from Noah. Jesus begins by saying, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. I'm sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. When you enter a house, say, peace be on. Be unto this house and eat what they provide. Don't go asking for no macaroni and cheese if you don't like what they're serving. Again, we hear if they aren't receptive to your message, shake the dust off and get out of town. But either way, announce to them that the kingdom of heaven is near you now. I just love that. Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus starts talking about these unrepented, unrepentive cities. This is kind of uh, out of sorts, doesn't it? He's recalling these cities in his mind, and he's saying to the disciples, don't waste your time going there because I was there, and they weren't receptive to me. Woe to you, these cities. Remember back in the Sermon on the Plain? Woe to you. It kind of seems out of place, but Jesus is recalling these cities in his mind. The Lord did not forget how he was treated there. How about that? Woe to you, you cities of unreceptive spirits. These cities called Coranzin, Bethsaida, Tyre, and Sidon. Bethsaida is Peter and Andrew's hometown not receptive to Jesus. Ugh. Return of the 70. Now they've returned. They've been out casting out demons and healing, preaching in Jesus' name, and now they have returned, and they are all pumped up. You know, you get home from that mission trip, and oh, yay, God. Hey, Jesus, even the demons came out because we used your name. They're on this spiritual high. Jesus says, I know. I saw Satan fall just as you were casting out the demons. In other words, just as you were casting light, the darkness fled. Get that? Casting light. If you're feeling a little dark, if the, you know, the seasonal depression stuff is real, light a candle or get one of them battery operated candles, you know, just soak in some light. They're on this spiritual high, but Jesus says, you know what's even better than what you're feeling right now? Eternal life. That's what's better. Your names will be written in the heavenly kingdom, he says. Jesus' prayer of thanksgiving. Jesus prays and gives thanks for all of this. Sometimes don't you just feel like so spiritual, uh, spiritually high and you just want to give thanks for all of this. So you know what it's like when you've had a great day. You know, at jam, we some, get pumped up. This week was much better, by the way. And everything clicks, or you're on this retreat or this mission trip high. Jesus needed that after yesterday's crapola day, the tough stuff day, remember? Then we get a story we're probably familiar with the parable of the Good Samaritan. It begins with a question from a legal expert that turns into a storyline. Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? The focus here is on doing. Remember, again, the Sermon on the Plain was about listening, hear, hearing, listening. This is about doing. And the concern is what? Who is my neighbor? Jesus says to the legal expert, what does the law say? We are to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, strength, mind, and then love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said, great, do this 
and you will live. But the legal expert is a little more inquisitive. Okay, but who's my neighbor? So Jesus uses an object lesson, a story. A man was going to Jerusalem to Jericho and then he was robbed. He was stripped of everything, beaten and left for dead. First, a priest comes along and takes a look at the guy and then he crosses to the other side of the road. Secondly, we get a Levite that comes along, looks at the guy and crosses to the other side of the road. And lastly, a Samaritan. Remember those no good, unclean Samaritans? First, we got the high and mighty priest and the Levite from the priestly line, all holy-like, and now we get this no good Samaritan. And, and good Jews didn't want to hang out with the Samaritans. Remember, Samaritan woman at the, the well, that's John's gospel, marginalized people again. What do we know about the guy left for dead? Not much. His identity is hidden. Samaritan. Samaritan goes and gets his little first aid kit off of his donkey. Scripture says it's wine and oil, and he disinfects this guy's wounds, bandages him up, throws him on his donkey, and he takes him into town to the hotel. He stays there and he cares for that for him. But he has to leave for a while and so he says to the desk clerk, whatever you need for caring for him, I will be back and I will pay you. Be sure to take good care of my new friend. Jesus asked, so which one was the neighbor in the story? The legal expert says the one who showed mercy, the Samaritan. Jesus says, yeah, be that guy, <laughs> be that guy, be kind. Don't just ignore the situation. When you see someone down on their luck, do what you can to help. Now, I mentioned this last year too. I wrote it in my notes. I did some research. There is a thing known as the Good Samaritan Law in our legal system. Did you know that? that offers legal protection to those who see a situation and stop to give reasonable assistance to those who they believe to be injured, ill, or in danger. It protects them from being sued for doing good. President George W. Bush used the parable of the Good Samaritan in his first inaugural address. He said, I can pledge our nation to a goal. When we see that wounded traveler on the road to Jericho, we will not pass to the other side. He was going to do all in his power to take care of our nation, even in distress. Both Good Samaritan, the story of the Good Samaritan, parable of the Good Samaritan, and Mary and Martha are exclusive to Luke's gospel. Mary and Martha, this story is about hearing. We had doing, first we had listening, we had doing, and this is about hearing again. Luke doesn't tell us where the house is located, but it is in Bethany, close to Jerusalem. I think it's about six miles from Jerusalem, very close. Yes, yeah, my notes say six miles, about six miles out of town. We'll find out that Jesus hangs out with this family a lot, Mary and Martha and brother Lazarus are very dear to Jesus. The story is exclusively about the sisters, though, here, Mary and Martha. Can you imagine? There's a knock on the door, and there stands Jesus. <laughs> In confirmation the other night, uh, we were talking about um, if Jesus came back, you know, and came to your house for dinner, what would you do? <laughs> and one of our, our girls says, well, I would first do something with this hair. <laughs> oh, that was a hoot and a half. I, I just love that. I just love their, their honesty, you know. So imagine there's a knock on your door and you open it and here stands the Lord. Here stands the Lord. Martha lets him in because Martha is all about hospitality. But this story is also about radical hospitality. 
all of a sudden Jesus invites himself into your house. Martha welcomes Jesus in, but she gets a little sidetracked, frazzled and worried because she doesn't know what she's going to feed him the, the, when the pastor shows up unannounced, right? Martha's in the kitchen and she, she's kind of freaking out here. She doesn't have anything thought out, you know, but Mary sits right down by Jesus' feet and she's listening to Jesus teach and Martha is ticked. She is ticked off. Mary, could you please come help me? Mary come, Martha comes straight to Jesus. Tell my sister to help me. <laughs> Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted about many things. Mary has chosen the better way. First, we learn about radical hospitality. Secondly, don't compare yourself to other people. It just brings on anxiety when we compare ourselves to other people. Sometimes that's hard to do. It steals our joy. We're in the third Sunday of Advent, joy. We also learn that when we are struggling, go straight to the feet of Jesus. Mary sat at the feet of Jesus, but I love Martha. She goes straight to Jesus and she lets him have it. This won't be the last time. That's why I love these sisters. God knows our heart anyway. You've heard me say that. Many of you have heard me say that. So Martha just lets Jesus have it. You know what? Jesus knew that she was ticked off anyway. If Martha can, so can we. Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. Insert your name here. Lori, Lori, you are worried and distracted by many things. Jesus says, come sit with me a while. Amen and amen. So that's chapter 10 in a nutshell. Chapter 11. I'd like you to compare today's reading, chapter 10, to chapter 11. We'll find that things are ramping up. And uh, here we get teaching about prayer. We get the Lord's Prayer. There's a deal called with the, there's controversy about demons and, and signs. The sign of Jonah, sometimes that's hard to figure out. So don't beat yourself up about that. Just jot some notes, we'll unpack it. Jesus criticizes the religious the religious leaders, Lot, lots of reading tomorrow, okay? Lots of reading, but uh, do what you can do and let it be enough. I just said that as I recorded our sermon for tomorrow. I'm using an old sermon called, And the Angel Left Her. So tune in there if you'd like to hear that. I wrote it back in 2014, but tomorrow's all about Mary. And so I've had a busy week and a busy day and you know, do what you can do and let it be enough. And so sleep well tonight. Let's pray. I feel like praying. How about, how about you? You feel like receiving? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, sometimes we just get so worried and distracted about so many things. And especially in the season where we're running to and fro and worried about what we're going to make for dinner and who gets what gift and all of the stuff, all of the stuff, Lord. And so help us just to take a breath and sit at your feet. I just pray over all of those who are listening. I ask that you would just continue to bless them as they, they read through this gospel of, of Luke, learning more and more about you. And so God, give us good rest tonight and a good day tomorrow. In your name we pray. Amen. There you go. We'll see you tomorrow.